But the art of leadership is a complex discipline to master, but one absolutely necessary for running a successful company. There's no one size fits all strategy to business management as different organizations require varied methods. However, there are key principles that many successful leaders live by. Here to tell us more is one herself, Juliet Ehemwan, a director leading Google's business in West Africa and a digital empowerment and self-leadership advocate. Welcome to the morning show. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Well, you've been so generous as to give us a copy of your book uh, entitled 30 Days of Excellence. And if you could, perhaps we could start with what the book itself is, because it's not like, it's not in your usual book, for example, that it, it's definitely more interactive. So could you tell us more about it? Absolutely, thank you so much. And thanks for having me. So uh, the 30 Days of Excellence, I call it a companion set. It is a guide that I created to provide the support needed to navigate life and work using tools and techniques that enable success, you know, from self-discovery, visioning, your attitude, time and priority management, self-leadership, because I believe leadership starts with self, recognizing opportunities that align with our core values, and then, you know, acting on these opportunities with a certain level of discipline and integrity. Now, it, 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 there are two parts to it. There is a spiral bound um, tabletop flip book that just really gives you an opportunity to have these messages really top of mind and in a place that is visible to you on a regular basis. It's 30 days. Each day comes with a key message and action points that have has been developed to help the user to focus on efforts that are required for making the most out of any situation and taking control of their own life. Uh, the second part to it is a workbook <laughs> that has calls to action and, you know, spaces for self-reflection, um, you know, uh, learnings, putting notes and uh, just doing some exercises. And so together, I believe that they're a companion set complementing other ways that we develop ourselves to ensure that we're thinking about things holistically. All right. Hi, Juliet. Hey. Um, I want to say Lovely book. I am actually enjoying the book myself. But I would like to find awesome. out from you because now in the society we find ourselves today, uh, they, are, they, get to, they, they tend to look at people who are positive-minded as not in touch with reality. And they talk about motivational speakers, those who probably always want to project positivity as people who, don't, who cannot relate to the problems of Nigerian society. And when you take a look at this book and draw inference from this book, how important is it for the mind to always be renewed on a daily basis and taking yourself through this particular 30 days of excellence to be able to reach the zenith of your career or maybe life? Thank you very much. That's an incredibly great question. It's important for us to focus on technical and functional skills, and we do a lot of that. But the human being is a complex whole. And um, some facets that we have, like our mind, these facets are really powerful and really make a difference. So while we're developing our functional and technical skills, which are important, it's important that we also develop life skills. We focus on making sure that we are the best versions of ourselves. And there are certain things that really play to that. There are some timeless principles that just really make us more effective at using those skills that we acquire or the resources that are available to us. Training the mind to be able to one, focus and just have that clarity of vision and purpose, working on things like our belief systems, our attitudes, these really make a difference. How we manage our time, right? Making sure that, you know, time is productive and that we're focusing on things that matter and take us closer to where we want to be. Now, you talked about motivation. That's really a good point. And I do make a distinction between motivation and commitment. Motivation is, you know, that passion that fuels you. It's an energy that really gets you going. But for you to achieve anything substantial in life, you can't just stay at the level of motivation. You need commitment. And it's in commitment that you then get to go through the due diligence that is required to get you from A to B. We're currently in the new year, and a lot of people talk about new year resolutions. And statistics worldwide show that by before the end of January, more than 
ninety uh, percent of people have uh, given up on their new re new year resolutions. What's going on there is the fact that, you know, at the point where we're making these resolutions, we're all fired up, we're excited, we're motivated, right? But motivation is not an, a sustainable form of energy. It's like excitement. You can't be excited all the time, <laughs> right? At True. some point, yeah. you have to replace that with the discipline of commitment. And that is where that diligence, that rigor comes in. And that's what will then sustain you through making sure that you take the necessary steps to achieve those goals that you set for yourself at the start of the year. And so it's important that these are complementary and we're thinking about things in a balanced way. You know, it takes a lot of discipline, no matter how excited or how uh, regener regenerated you may feel uh, at the beginning of a new year. It does take a lot of uh, discipline to note down your, your goals, your aspirations. And also with a lot of the questions in this book, it, it calls for a certain amount of honesty that people may not be ready to, to you know, write down or to you know, really visualize in front of them. So when you come to creating this book, could you tell us what your main goal was? What, what purpose you wanted this book to serve? Absolutely. So I believe that everyone has immense potential. And I believe that we all deserve a chance at fulfilling that potential. And for as long as I remember, you know, even personally, I have always wanted to be the best version of myself, right? And um, I have uh, constantly just looked at what sorts of strategies and principles can help growth and, and success. And looking to share that with people, um, you know, the in intention for this book is to be able to provide some digestible nuggets, you know, like cogent points that really make a difference in manageable chunks that are easy to digest. That's why it's structured the way it is on a daily basis. The intention is that this is a guide for anyone who's looking to achieve growth and success from entrepreneurs to um, you know professionals to leaders you know anyone that is really looking at ensuring that they're positioned to achieve their vision and the goals that they set for themselves and develop those habits that really take us forward. All right, Juliet, I've seen that you've been very deliberate with this book, and one of the things that captured me, you mentioned the nuggets that have been encapsulated in this book, but more importantly, you left a whole space when you look at it from page to page of where people can actually document things down. How important is it to write things when it comes to self-development, when you're building yourself, and also when you're trying to be the best version of yourself, like you've been saying? Absolutely. So uh, looking at things in steps, I would say that the first step to achieve anything and this is covered as well in the book. To achieve anything, you have to decide what it is you want to create. If you just look at stories of successful people around the world, role models, they started with a very clear picture of where they wanted to go. And that, I would say, is a vision, right? Just articulating that very clearly. Now, it's very important for that to be written down because that helps it to be more concrete. When we leave things in our heads, we can wriggle out of it, it's, it can be blurry, fuzzy, and you can let yourself off the hook. But if you write it down, it forces you to think about it and you articulate what that is. And that's an important first step. That's not everything, but it's a very important first step. And then you go to the next step, which is then looking at how do I make this happen, right? What is the plan? I talk about the fact that you are the captain of your ship. If you imagine your life as a ship, you are the captain and the driver. A ship would not move unless directed by the captain to do so, right? And it's important for you as the captain of the ship to be able to plot the map that would take the ship from where it is now to its desired destination. That requires some, some amount of research, perhaps. That requires some planning. That requires um, consuming different materials, looking at data and, and, and different tools and resources to just help you create a very concrete plan. Let me just take a very simple example. If you're going from Lagos to Abuja, right? You need a plan. You need to decide, am I going to go by air? Am I going to go by road? When am I going to travel? When is the best time? If it's by air, what are the airlines that, that are available and that make sense? How do I get myself to the airport? What do I pack? How, how much luggage is, is, is acceptable in terms of uh, luggage weight? 
and so on and so forth, right? And so it's important to then, you know, create that plan and then start looking at organizing our world for success. Now, organizing our world, I would say, is both internal and external. When you talk about organizing your internal world, that's where you look Juliet, at your beliefs. it pains me to have to interrupt you here, but it <laughs> is time for us to take a very short break. Not to worry, when we come back from that break, Juliet will still be here talking about goals and leadership for the year ahead. Please do stay with us. Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. We're still joined by Jill, Juliet Ehimwan, who is the director of Glo Google's business in West Africa. And she's also a digital empowerment and self-leadership advocate. Before we went on break there, I know in the middle of your response, you talked about being the captain of your own ship, mm -hmm. which is definitely something that people would have to identify in their lives. But when we come off of the back of a year like 2020, it definitely made you feel like in many instances, I am not in control of my own life. I cannot be the captain of my own ship where I'm told I can't leave, I have to stay indoors for work, or I, I can't do this, or I have to reschedule this, uh, this, this life event. 2020 really put things into perspective. So when you come off a year like that, and, you know, just because we're in a new year, we're in the third day of 2021, we're still very much in the throes of a pandemic. How do you think that people can go ahead with setting their goals and looking forward to achieving things this year when they've come off the back of a year like 2020, which really made you feel very powerless in many instances? Question, And it's one that I get a lot and um, one of the concepts covered in the book. So... Um, yes, 2020 has been a challenging year for everyone. There's no, uh, there, there are no two ways to, to, to talk about that. And uh, it disrupted a lot of things. It took us by surprise, took the entire world by surprise. Now, um, and society and external events certainly play a big role in the way we experience life, right? And to a large extent, we, can, we may not be able to control what happens to us, what happens externally. However, there's something we have control over, and that is the way we respond to the situations that happen. So, for example, if we take the COVID pandemic, it was tragic, there's no, uh, no doubt about it. But people responded in different ways. And for um, many individuals and businesses, the difference between sinking and thriving was the response to the challenges. There were some companies that responded swiftly. They showed empathy and leadership, crafted out solutions, were innovative, and you know, leveraged technology to connect staff and reach cons uh, consumers, and just found themselves in better positions than others that did not, right? And individuals as well that accepted that you know, the world had changed and is still changing, and started adjusting to the new normal also found themselves mentally better off in the long run. And so, um, yes, life happens, and we can't necessarily always control external events, but what we have power over is controlling how we respond to those situations. And the invitation is that we respond from an empowered perspective, not from a, not from a victim perspective. Okay. All right, um, Juliet. Um, I would like to find out because um, your book talks a lot about self-leadership. But for you to lead people, do you need to have full mastery of yourself? Because some people say that you have to learn to lead yourself before you can begin to lead others. Do you need to? Because we see time and time again, people actually sink into depression, commit suicide, spiral out of control, literally because... They are almost trying to hit that perfection mark. Do you need to fully have a grasp of yourself for you to be able to probably lead an organization or maybe even lead the world? I would say life is a constant process of learning. None of us is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But hopefully, hopefully we are improving and growing on a regular basis. I think growth is, is, is what's important to call out. And yes, I do believe that leadership starts with self, just as charity begins at home. Because you can't give what you don't have. To be a leader, I think it's very important that you also develop a certain level of self-leadership, being able to direct and lead your own life, right? And when I talk about self-leadership, there are some elements to it. There is um, self-direction, 
which is really around clarity of vision and purpose, being your own coach, being able to, uh, being the captain of your ship, as I mentioned before, being the driver, right, in your life. Uh, and then there's self-awareness, which is really understanding yourself better and understanding the impacts that you're having on other people and on, on the environment. Now, this is important in leading others because it helps you to also understand the impact you're having on your team. Are you, are you micromanaging, for example, right? Are you driving your team crazy? Or are you uh, as empathetic as you need to be? Are you, are you clear in setting the goals and the visions for the team? If you're not clear about that in your life, then that may translate into um, how you communicate and how you um, position that for your team. And the third bucket for me is self-discipline which is really the rigor and the diligence about getting things done and execution for any um, leader within an organization. Execution is really key and being able to inspire the right levels of execution. So yes, I believe self-leadership is key and it does translate into organizational leadership in a very effective way. Thank you very much. I'm so glad that we, I mean, during this conversation, yeah. I know we've never met before, but it does feel very personal. In one instance, when you create, for lack of a better term, self-help books and self-help series like this, sometimes it could be, you know, misconstrued that, you know, I'm teaching you how to better your life because my life is perfect. And I'm sure that that's not your intention there. So like when you talk about your own personal journey, when it comes to self-mastery and self-development, I know that you've also recently com completed your Beyond Limits Transformation series. Can you tell us a bit more about that and what you've learned, what were standout moments on that journey? Thank you so much. Um, and you do make a very important point. Um, this is not about just concepts in the head that are like pie in the sky ideas. I'm a very practical person. <laughs> and um, and I'm on this journey as well. These are things that I try to practice in my own life. Some I've uh, some I do better at, others it's work in progress, right? But these are timeless principles that work. And that's why there's the inspiration to share, you know, with people as much as possible uh, in this um, companion set. Now, the Beyond Limits Transformational Series was a six weeks program that we um, you know, ran last year. And I was really uh, impressed with uh, the, um, the, the level of impact. There were participants from various continents and countless cities around the world, more than 16,000, I would say, um, people interacting on, on social media with the content and providing feedback uh, and sharing testimonials, you know, success stories. Um, and, you know, that impact is really one of the things that inspired me to go further and put some of those nuggets into the companion set that we're talking about today, the uh, 30 Days of Excellence. Now, as part of that series also, I kicked off the first Beyond Limits Think Tank, which involved group mentoring sessions with 12 selected participants and nine mentors, which were leaders in their fields. Um, and, you know, the participants were a combination of entrepreneurs, professionals in the corporate world, um, and, um, you know, they all reported very positive feedback. Of the 12, three were awarded financial grants as well to support their businesses and aspirations. And this is something that is going to be repeated on an annual basis. And so, you know, that transformational series was an invitation to everyone to say, you know what, our capacity for growth and success as human beings is beyond the bounds that we usually impose on ourselves or what we think possible. But one key to achieving that is to be very deliberate about going after what we want and then organizing our world to make that possible. And it was great to see people respond in a phenomenal way and to see the impact. So that's something that we're going to continue. Well, that's quite interesting. I was because I was just thinking in my mind with the whole noise <laughs> and with the whole conundrum about COVID-19. Mm. How important is it for people to still remain focused on what really matters in life and not get carried away by all that is happening? Actually, it's even more important now because there's so much to distract us, right? It's more important now than ever to keep our visions alive. And as we turn the page on 2020, which has been a challenging year for on many fronts, it's important that, you know, going into 2021, that we uh, just re-energize ourselves. And part of that is 
just keeping our visions alive. Because when that vision is strong, it continues to pull you. And so even when you have challenges and disruptions, you just understand that I need to course correct, right? Maybe I need to change direction. Perhaps I thought something would take a year to achieve. Maybe now it's going to take 18 months. I thought this was going to be offline, uh, an offline experience, but maybe I have, to, I have to take it online, right? When that vision is very clear, then you're more inspired, you're more motivated, you're more energized to look for alternatives and to course correct when necessary. So my invitation to everyone is, you know, we're alive. We have to make it count. Don't give up. Get back to the table and go through that process again to clarify what do I want my life to be about this year in different areas, in work, at home, in relationships, in, in my finances, my physical well-being. Life exists in multiple domains. What do I want my life to be about in each of those? And then start to apply some of these principles to bringing them to life. Thank you very much. We are coming to the end of our conversation. We do have time for a very quick question and answer. As we look ahead to the rest of this year, is there something special that you are focusing on that you'd like to share with us? Absolutely. So uh, the focus at the moment is just really spreading the word with a goal to uh, getting this companion set in the hands of um, uh, you know, tens of thousands of people um, and uh, you know, with a goal to reach a million down the line. And, um, you know, we welcome leaders to obtain where copies for Where can we find them. it, uh, Julia? Where, where can your book be found? How can it be ordered? It's available at major bookstores, uh, um, Roven Heights, Latena Books, uh, Boulders Books, and they deliver across the country. It's also available on Amazon. And on my social media page, J at J Ehimwan, you can get a lot of information as well. And um, my invitation to leaders and, and people is, you know, this is a great gift to give people to start the year. It's a great resource to obtain for your staff, for your mentees, uh, for students. So I just really welcome people to lean in and Definitely. partner with us. Mm. Fantastic. Well, Julia Ehmwan, thank you very much for your time. You. Once again, 30 Days of Excellence uh, is available for now. I yeah. know Aaron and I will be Yes, of course I do have mine. I'll be gleaning through. Thank you very much for your time. It is.